Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Uh, my second guest is a friend of the show, been on here before, but definitely a big get because I'm sure everybody's talking to you this morning uh, or I today. I can't imagine why. After uh, <laughs> Richard Sherman goes nuts and uh, almost gets uh, Aaron Andrews in a headlock. No, uh, the great Bonnie Bernstein is here, <laughs> who is a pioneer herself. She's one of the pioneer oh, women. That makes me feel so old. Yeah, but this is a, a, an industry that's not that long ago that you pioneered. I'm not saying you're like, okay, you know, you, you ended slavery with the forefathers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, they started slavery. I'm sorry. Uh, no, but so what? Is, what has the reaction been? Like, they go, okay, Aaron Andrews, should she be offended? Did she react properly? Does Richard Sherman need to apologize to her? No. Yeah, why? I mean, to me, that's... Why? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Whoever told him to do that is, is, is sort of being patronizing to women on the sidelines. I would be interested to see who exactly it was who told him to apologize. Well, again, we always assume players need advice. Maybe he did it on his own. I doubt it. Uh, some stupid uh, public relations guy might have said, listen, apologize, it's a woman. A woman doesn't... They don't need to be coddled, is no. my point. You know what? Here's the deal. If you're doing sideline... Right. ...and you have half-game post-game, post-event responsibilities, you know what you're getting yourself into. Right. Which means you have no idea what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> it can be different on any given day. I've had coaches go off on me for reasons which I'm still not sure why. Can you name names? Uh, what happened? Who, who, who surprised you? Who surprised me? Okay. You this was way back when. Right? No, this was hilarious. And it was nothing. It was just... When you're in those situations where you're just coming off the field to play, regardless of where it is in the game, emotions are flying high. We don't watch football because it's like watching a Chinese checkers match. <laughs> you know, there there is a violence, you know, I'm yeah. preaching to the choir here. Yeah. There's a violence to the game, and you can't just shut The only person who could shut it off immediately is Troy Polamalu. He goes <laughs> really? absolutely crazy for a play. And then he prays before the next yeah, play. That's funny. And then he goes nuts He's like a Tasmanian devil. He's, He's very spiritual, spiritual yeah. but it's just very few athletes I found have the ability to instantly turn it on and off like that. So years ago, I was doing a Lions game. They've had their struggles over the years. Yeah. Bobby <laughs> Ross was the coach at the time, and, and I, I don't even him. remember why he yeah. was mad, but he was mad. And I got him at halftime, and he just started. And you know, you do what Aaron did. You just hold the mic. <laughs> <laughs> if you're daring, you'll follow up. And if not, you just say, thanks, coach, back to you. Right, right, right. You know, right. And, and you're sort of limited. But, you know, I, Aaron, Aaron did the best job she could. But the one thing that I did wonder, and this is not an Aaron thing, because, like, three different people interviewed him. Strahan finally asked, what was it that Michael Crabtree said yeah, well, that yeah, had exactly. Sherman so ticked off? Now, apparently... Did we find that out? Well, from what I've read today, apparently the two of them were Larry Fitzgerald's golf tournament over the summer. Oh, yeah, John was saying that, yeah. Crabtree had something less than complimentary, and Sherman's sort of held a grudge. So Crabtree started it in a way. Maybe. Yeah. Again, these are athletes. These are guys know. who really go to a, a mini war every week. And, you know, I, I also hate the fact, uh, you know, that a lot of people make fun of boxers being inarticulate when they get interviewed after a fight. Box 14 rounds and then get interviewed by somebody. I want to see how articulate you, you know, I mean, forget about it. William F. Buckley would sound like an idiot, you but know. But you know what bugs me more than anything? That people determine, based on that one emotion-ridden moment, the character of a person. Right. Drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah. And Sherman, who is very intelligent, very articulate, writes pieces frequently from Monday Morning Quarterback, Peter King's site, mm -hmm. uh, was talking today about how he just got besieged on Twitter by racist comments. Oh, my God. We read some of them at the beginning. I don't understand it. 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 It's, it's like, I, I'm I a do comic. not understand it. I'm a crazy comedian who's done every type of material. It's hard to offend me. Like, I was offended by those tweets. It's, it's, it really makes you think... It's still 1928 in parts of this country. It's scary as hell. And, and I've had the chance to be around him. His marketing agent is, is a good friend of mine. And uh. so I've, I've had dinner with Richard and his brother. They're both terrific guys with, with bright minds. And they just, he went to Stanford. He is extraordinarily gifted on the field. Off the field, he's got this wonderful foundation. He comes from Compton. We know Compton's not a great place. Yeah. And the whole message of his foundation is talking to at-risk youth about leaning educa on education to help them get out. Right. I think it's such an extraordinary message, but I'm sure a lot of these people out there tweeting on a whim haven't taken two seconds to Google Richard Sherman and all right. the good things he does. Yeah, well, well listen, if you, you know? tweet this, I don't care if it's a whim or not, there's no whim that tweets this. 
<laughs> Dumb effing N word. Enjoy your holiday tomorrow, Sherman. That's that's not a that's not a, a like. And a, you know what ooh. he was doing on his holiday? You know what he was doing on his holiday? He was giving out hundreds of Converse shoes yeah. to at risk youth. Uh, that's that, what he was doing on his holiday. That he was, was the celebrating, most celebrating going to the Super Bowl. That's what Richard Sherman was doing. That's a real like. I, just, that, I don't have that's any a taught, for that at all. That's a taught racist. Like bringing the oh, Martin yeah. Luther King Day into it. That's yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, listen. The, Richard Sherman gets the last laugh because he's going to the biggest game of his life. What What are your thoughts on the game? You got Seahawks and that defense and Peyton Manning uh, and, and a great offense. What What a again the NFL benefits from storybook matchups a lot of the time. And this is a year where, uh, you know, John, I want you to uh, elaborate on this because you know more than I. But Bonnie, what do you think about this? It's a It's a legendary matchup. There in a lot are of two ways. things that come to mind. Um, obviously, from an offensive perspective. Peyton Manning is better stacked than right. Russell Wilson is. Oh, yeah. Now, it would be a different story if he had Percy Harvin, and he may have Percy Harvin and yeah, Sidney Rice. And, and that's, you know, that's that's no slate to Doug Baldwin, and it's no slate to Golden, no, no slate to Golden Tate, but it is what it is. I think one of the most important things for Sherman and for Byron Maxwell, the other corner, got to jam line guys at the line of scrimmage. Right. Because so much of what Peyton does is predicated on timing, relying on receivers to be at a particular spot, at a particular time. Because mm -hmm. the ball's coming out when he dictates it is, and you got to be there. And if, if the corners, if the DBs are able to jam guys up the line and get them off their routes and get their timing off, I think that will be really important. Yeah. I think uh, I think Peyton Manning with this Omaha thing, is the, he's given me such a great... <laughs> Greatest he's added, thing for Omaha. Well, he's added such a great thing to our culture. Because now, wherever I change my mind in my personal life, I yell out Omaha. <laughs> like, uh, even like dinner... I told uh, my girlfriend I want a ravioli's today at noon, and then at 3 o'clock I left her a voicemail saying, Omaha! Steak! Can I ask yeah. a question? Yeah. Have you set a date yet? For what? Your wedding. Uh, uh, because the last I'm time my you next was on the I'm taping my next Comedy you Central special. You just got special. engaged. <laughs> yeah, but May 3rd I'm taping a Comedy Central special. I have that down. No, You're uh, circumventing. You we, sound we, like a politician. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I look like the governor, too. Uh, uh, which is, wow. Um, Don't close any bridges. <laughs> <laughs> we By want the way, for that. I want him in the White House, because how often is it that I get to have a, a governor, that, a president that looks exactly like me as a comedian. I can do impressions, corporate gigs, forget yeah. it. Um, you know, I don't want to get into a political rant because politics is not my thing, but I did grow up in New Jersey. Me too. And, and I have to give Christy a lot of credit. Yeah. He, he does not care. The teachers union in New Jersey is one of the strongest right. unions in the state. He broke it. I think one of the greatest things is I know he caught all sorts of crap. But he took the helicopter to his kid's baseball game. I know. And, and he did a press conference either the day after, a few days after. And he said, you know what? I felt okay the moment my kid came up to me and put his arms around me. And he said, Daddy, thanks for being here. Well, listen, and lots of people will say you don't justify using a private helicopter or state-funded helicopter to go. But here's why that's a lie. The first lie is that his kid can get his arms around him. That's the first lie. <laughs> 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 Who is this kid? Uh, <laughs> Octopus man. O Octo man from <laughs> his kid, Octo man yeah. from from, from <sighs> Spider Man. His kid's like dad. He should have said, "Listen, I knew I was okay when my kid threw his arms around my ankle." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you're, you're, listen, as a Jersey, he is a Jersey guy. He's saying, I don't care. And the liberals have to watch out here because this could backfire because they hate the liberal media. And if they keep pounding on him, it's going to get people to, uh, you know, vote for him who normally wouldn't even. Republicans who hate him will come out to vote for him because the liberals hate him and are pounding on him. We got so people gotta be pounding careful. on the governor. We got people pounding on the state because the Super Bowl's there. I right. just feel like my poor state is in. Nah, it's it's it, believe me, Jersey will be fine. You're right. It's uh, it's got a lot of. They're tough, all going to uh, come and see how great it is. Yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah. If I want one town to represent uh, Jersey, it's Sea Caucus. I want people to see. <laughs> Please try. Have you driven through Sea Caucus? It's amazing. The train station's <laughs> awesome. The light rail, <laughs> fantastic. It still stinks like hell. But uh, no, I, I think uh, that. Um, the, the fact that Peyton's offense against that defense, I mean, that's an awesome thing, right, John? I mean, yeah, what, a, what's your analogy? The number this? one offense against the number one yeah. defense. I and think, it's Peyton Manning. Yeah, and I would love for Peyton to win. But going into this, I said from the get-go, if we have bad weather, the NFC team wins. Right. And, and I, I 
But they're both I, bad weather I'm teams. To that. And well, Denver well, even more so because well, it was 61 degrees and sunny. Well, it can be 75 one day in it February. It did look the thing is, degrees it did look next. beautiful there. Colorado has weather like oh, it's awesome. I've yeah. been to Aspen, Denver. Like it's always so gorgeous there. But Everyone's the thing cold. is, they're they're still built like a nice weather team. The way that they throw the football, right. and and I just always feel like that. Just rugged defense is a cold weather thing. I don't know why. So like I, I, feel like, I feel like stopping the run and running the football is cold weather. They ran great, though. And how, 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 how think great? about this. Yeah. Arm strength if it's windy. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's got pretty decent. He's arm got a strength. gun. That's I mean, what I'm saying. One play, Peyton he was like does not have a gun the back anymore. Field, and he bought passing. himself like nine seconds, and he threw a bullet all the way downfield. And I was like, yes. and like just perfect, beautiful spiral that just sliced yeah. through the air. Yeah, he's I know, got, but he's, he's inconsistent. Got a, he's got a much stronger arm than Peyton Manning like does. Like Kaepernick, they can run the ball better than the Broncos okay. can, and they play better defense than the Broncos do. Broncos that made it. in. A snowstorm wins the game. Broncos that in a, windy, cold weather wins the game. Broncos made a great call, though, in, like, if they're begging you to, uh, uh, somebody said it, one of the announcers said it, if they're begging you to, to run the ball, run the ball. And they had a lot yeah. of big runs from scrimmage that were huge. Absolutely. Well, the first time those two teams played. Not going to happen against the Seahawks, though, the, right? No, I don't no, think so. Not. The first time those teams played uh, <laughs> this year, the Broncos ran for 280 yards. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous. But the way that the Seahawks play defense, uh, they love bringing Cam Chancellor down into the box. Cam Chancellor is a guy, they're, they're he's studs. like 6'3", 230 oh, pounds. He and Sherman strong are just, yeah. I mean, yeah, three of the four guys in their secondary are going to the Pro I mean, they're obviously not going to play in the Pro Bowl because they have uh, yeah. bigger fish to fry Which, two weeks which from makes now. Uh, the Pro Bowl should go the way of the penny and, and, and the extra point eventually. Just get rid of it. But yeah. I mean, you got you got two solid pass rushers. You got a good linebacker core. So I I understand what you're saying. I'm really interested to see now. Percy Harvin should play. Yeah, yeah, that's a and big if deal. If he does, that's a huge deal because yeah, there's absolutely. nobody else among those receivers that's going to force you to really pay attention to possibly roll safety coverage over yeah. to help. And if you don't have that, what do you do? You load the box and you say, Marshawn Lynch, go ahead, right? Have at it. By and the way, and then you you. We what? Got, we got to take a break, but a hot oh. chick. Yeah, a hot one, chick, a hot one chick. high safety against Percy Harvin, that's not enough at yeah. times. A hot chick saying roll safety coverage. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, come on. A hot chick saying roll safety coverage. That's it. You, you marry All right, that, am I done now? Drop the mic. You marry that woman. By the way, we have not set a date because I'm working like crazy. There's a there's a team of five lawyers working Excuses. on this. There's a te oh, sorry. team of five lawyers. Sorry, just this cold. I just hired a, <laughs> I just hired Lee Steinberg and his team to work on the prenuptial agreement. <laughs> She's not getting my 78 most valuable player trophy in the league. <laughs> I want to talk about the extra point thing with you guys. You've been around football your whole lives. I want to. They might get rid of it. I like that idea. We'll it's talk, interesting. We'll talk about that uh, on the Artie Lang show after this. How's that for a tease? The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.